On the last episode with the Honda Beat, we pulled the motor and tore it down to see what went wrong on the K-Car road trip. To our surprise, there was a hole in the piston and the engine had ringland failure, which means the Beat needs a new motor. That's right, you guys asked for it and we're gonna deliver. I got a K20Z1 that we're gonna put into the Honda Beat. It is about three to four inches too tall for the chassis, but eh, we'll figure it out. It's also about two inches too wide for the chassis. But again, we can figure that out. There's a fuel tank in the engine bay that we're gonna have to move somewhere. Uh, again, I'm sure we'll figure it out. Mark is a smart guy, but I do have to get working on the Civic actually, so I'm gonna leave this to Mark to put in. Um, it's gonna be quite the endeavor, but hope you stick around for it. Make sure you subscribe so you see it all. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna hand it off to Mark now. We're gonna case swap this thing. Yeah, we're not gonna do that. It would cost us way too much time and money to fit this K-Series motor into the Honda Beat. Instead, we have this E07A. It has factory ITBs, which sound amazing. Slow cars are fun to drive fast, am I right? It gets a whole lot better fuel economy than the K-Series motor. And we can get this motor in a whole lot quicker than we can the K-Series. So before we just chuck this motor in, since this is a used engine and transmission, we don't know too much about it. We kinda wanna break everything down that we can, refresh whatever needs to be refreshed, put everything back together, drop it back in the beam. So the first thing that I'm gonna go ahead and do, I'm gonna take this transmission off and break it apart. So now that we finally got the transmission assembled, we're gonna go ahead and start replacing some of the bearings because this is a older transmission. We're not sure how many miles is on it. So we wanna go ahead and freshen up all the bearings and replace this clutch release fork, needle bearings, new seals. And then uh, the main reason on why we wanted to break this transmission open is to go ahead and replace fourth and fifth gear with Acti gears. This will drop the RPM range by about a thousand and less wear and tear on the motor. So there's a lot of just metal rolling around in this transmission and I believe we just need to deep clean everything, get all that material out. So we're gonna do our best to clean it and replace a lot of these uh, bearings as well. So we'll be using the Valvoline Full Synthetic 7590 to go in our Honda Beat transmission. And we'll also use this to lube up the new parts that are going into that transmission as well. People generally run a 1030 engine oil, and we didn't want to do that. We wanted to run an actual transmission fluid, and that's why we went with 7590. It has got a very close viscosity to 1030. It would actually be along the lines of a 1040. Now that we got the gears and the bearings on the counter shaft and the main shaft done, we're gonna focus our attention to these bearings here and replace those. And that'll be the last of it and then we can start putting this transmission back together. So it's a good thing that we also popped this thing open because the seal was on its way out. We have a crack right here, at least pieces of rubber missing. And actually if you feel it, it's very hard, it's, it's not pliable. It was a good thing that we were going to replace this.
transmission all back together, we'll go ahead and replace the clutch release fork and a few more seals. Now that we got the transmission fully refreshed, we're gonna go ahead and start replacing some of the gaskets and seals on this E07A, and we're also going to check the timing, make sure that it is in time for one, and then two, check the timing belt, see if it's healthy. If not, we'll go ahead and replace it while the engine's out. So now that we got the engine harness out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and remove this valve cover since we are replacing it anyway, and it'll give us access to the timing belt. This is a, like a really good reason on why we need to change out these seals. These seals were leaking and it was causing oil to get on the spark plug wires. On your engine, you have timing marks. So that's straight, that's straight. This mark is, is where it needs to be, and that's how you can usually tell if everything is in time. Now we're gonna go ahead and change out this timing belt, since it is in time, and uh, replace this water pump, the idler, and the tensioner. So while we still have the valve cover off, we're gonna go ahead and make sure the clearances of these valves are set correctly. So far I've checked a couple of them and they seem a little tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust it while we still have the cover off. But I can't even get this uh, feeler gauge in and that's how tight the clearance is currently. to take off this exhaust wrap. It can become soaked in oil and cause a fire. It can also trap humidity and rust your exhaust. Please don't do this. Highly do not recommend doing this. the rear main seal. I think it's very important that anytime you have the transmission off, because it's so labor intensive, um, that you should just go ahead and do it. Get it done out the way so you know that it's 100% good before you put that transmission on and put it back in the motor. They make a tool for this. I seem to always do this the wrong way. And uh, I saw a neat little trick the other day and I kind of want to give it a try. Usually you wanna resurface the flywheel when getting a new clutch, but I don't think this looks too bad and it's really not that big of a deal since the Honda Beat doesn't make much power. With the EOS 7A all refreshed and back together, let's put it in the car.
axle boots are dry rotted and need to be replaced. While Ben was on the road trip, the axle boots were leaking and he used Flex Seal as a temporary fix to get them back on the road. Now we're going to rebuild these axles with new axle boots and we'll be using Valvoline Full Synthetic Molly Fortified Grease. Valvoline is awesome. Like I honestly love their products. Now that we finally got the car back together, we're gonna go ahead and start filling it full of fluids and with it up in the air, we're gonna go ahead and fill the transmission with 7590 Valvoline Full Synthetic. Since the Honda Beat runs at such a high RPM on the highway, we need the best protection and that's why we're going with Valvoline Full Synthetic advanced protection. And now it's cooling time. And you know we're going with the Xerox by Valvoline. This is a 50-50 mixture for Asian vehicles and lo and behold, we're working on a Honda. It is very important to select the right coolant for your engine, if you don't select the right one, it will start corroding and you'll have a ton of other issues. Your radiator will start to fail and it's because it doesn't have the right phosphates and protectants. Now that everything's complete, let's go ahead and give her a start. some more diagnosing. Does that look like copper? I think we need to pull the oil pan off. Ben just has no luck. And neither do I. So let's go ahead and start draining the oil, see what more we can find out on what's going on here. I literally don't see anything. I'm very confused right now. Assuming that right there is RTV. Looks like red. It doesn't look like a bearing material. I think to get a clearer image, I'm gonna have to take the pan off. That not look the greatest. Well, just what I thought. I can't tell anything. There's not a clear indication of like metal shavings. So that's got me a little confused. It looks like we got a little bit of oil leaking from the distributor. So we'll go ahead and change that out since we're uh, still trying to track down what's, what's going on. Still got a, I guess, valve train tick or, or something. There, there's still a noise in there. I'm pulling the valve cover off to see if maybe somehow 
even though I double checked the valves. So you get something's loose. And I double checked everything. This bolt is still tight, but I don't know why this is loose. Ticking noise all gone, we can button it up and take it for a test drive. Mark, I was thinking about it. This case swap does not make a ton of sense. I don't really have much money left. <laughs> and honestly, I love driving this car because it's so slow. And like listening to the ITBs, going flat out everywhere. And I need the gas mileage because good grief, all my cars get like no fuel economy. Trust me, I know. I mean, you know. I put the EU7A back in because, like I said, I already knew. You serious? Yes. Go for a test drive. Seriously? Yeah. Dude. 